History and Background of Aramaic, brought to you by JesusBookAramaic.com. Did Jews speak Greek? The title of this website is called Jesus Spoke Aramaic, which obviously reflects the fact that Aramaic was the dominant language of Israel, Palestine, in the first century AD, which is the context in which the New Testament was written. There is a wealth of evidence on this website showing that Aramaic was the language of several entire empires across the Middle East, that the Jews fought against Greek influence in the Maccabean Revolt, that Aramaic continued in use for many centuries afterwards, hence the Armenian Bible and the early Arabic Bibles being translated from the Aramaic Peshitta, and that Aramaic continued for many centuries after that, including right down through Muslim and Crusader times, and indeed right through to the present day. Nevertheless, because of the fact that the New Testament in Greek has gained such dominance in the West, it is a commonly held belief that Jesus spoke Greek, and that Greek was a lingua franca, or common language, of the whole Middle East, following Alexander the Great's conquests. Most, if not all, New Testament Greek grammars, for example, will contain a statement that either Greek was the lingua franca of the Middle East, or that Jesus spoke Greek, which is why the New Testament was written in Greek. It must be understood that this, however, is a circular argument. In other words, this argument states that the New Testament was written in Greek because Jesus spoke Greek, and Jesus spoke Greek because the New Testament was written in Greek. But it could just as easily be argued that Jesus spoke English because we have the New Testament in English. English New Testaments have outsold every other version by a substantial margin. They have dominated the West. They have become more popular than every other version. But that does not mean that Jesus spoke English or that English was a lingua franca of the Middle East. Instead, to understand whether Jesus really did speak Greek and whether Greek was the normal spoken language amongst Jews at the time, we have to take a step back and examine the context of when and where the New Testament was written. How did people in general, and Jews in particular, at the time feel about Greek, and would they have spoken it? We have to remember that the Middle East in the first century AD was made up of many different peoples, languages, and nations. There were Jews and non-Jews, and within Jews, there were many different groups which are well known and well documented. They include the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, secular Jews, and other lesser known groups such as the Essenes. Unfortunately for the Jews, the Romans ruled in Palestine. The Roman emperors are well known from history, including the excesses of despots such as Nero and Domitian, who relentlessly persecuted Christians. Titus and Vespasian are also well known from history as the destroyers of the temple in AD 70. Now, the Romans had their own language, Latin. They used Latin for official duties, and Latin was the language used by the Romans to write their histories, including those of Julius Caesar, Pliny, Livy, Tacitus and Suetonius, and the various histories which they wrote. It therefore seems highly unlikely that Jews in Israel, or anyone else in Israel, would have needed Greek to conduct business with the ruling Romans, since they used Latin. Amongst Jews, therefore, what was the feeling towards Greek? Was Greek a language that they learned, respected and used for everyday conversation? We need to do some historical research to answer this question. But we first need to understand that not all Jews were the same. Just as today we have ultra-Orthodox Jews, Orthodox Jews, Reform Jews and so on, so too in Palestine in the first century AD there was a mixture of Jews. There were religious Jews and secular Jews. There were zealots. There were Essenes. There were Pharisees. There were Sadducees. There were scribes and other groups. They were not all the same. As we will see in our lesson about the Maccabean Revolt, the Greek language and culture were imposed on Jews under Antiochus. Jews were forcibly persecuted. Eventually, the Jews rebelled and won the victory against the Greek army. But in the process, many Jews died and succumbed to Greek culture, Greek wisdom and Greek language. We therefore find that at the time of the New Testament, some Jews had succumbed to Greek learning and had allowed pagan Greek philosophy such as wisdom, devils, false ideas of heaven and hell and so on to enter Judaism. These Jews had started to Hellenize Judaism 
and absorb ideas from the Greek pagan culture around them, and mainstream Judaism despised them for it. They are known from history as Hellenized Jews, or in the New Testament as the Grecian Jews. We read about them in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 6 verse 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. The Hellenizing influence amongst Jews at the time was significant enough that Wikipedia has a whole article about it. Let us quote from Wikipedia, from the article on Hellenistic Judaism. Hellenistic Judaism was a form of Judaism in the ancient world, that combined Jewish religious tradition with elements of Greek culture. Until the fall of the Roman Empire and the Muslim conquests of the Eastern Mediterranean, the main centres of Hellenistic Judaism were Alexandria, Egypt, and Antioch, northern Syria, now Turkey, the two main Greek urban settlements of the Middle East and North Africa area, both founded at the end of the 4th century BCE in the wake of the conquests of Alexander the Great. Hellenistic Judaism also existed in Jerusalem during the Second Temple period, where there was conflict between Hellenizers and traditionalists, sometimes called Judaizers. It's easy to see from this, and the New Testament passages, that there was significant antagonism between mainstream Jews and these Grecian or Hellenized Jews. They didn't like each other. Mainstream Jews felt that the Grecian, Hellenized Jews were corrupting Judaism, polluting it with their false ideas and pagan culture. Jews had earlier fought against the Greeks in the earlier Maccabean revolt. There was therefore intense anti-Greek feeling amongst traditional religious Jews. To understand the nature and intensity of these feelings, let us consider a statement from the Babylonian Talmud. The Babylonian Talmud in tract Baba Kama, the first gate, chapter 7. At that time it was declared that cursed be he who raised swine, and cursed be he who taught his sons Greek. In other words, religious Jews believed that learning Greek was something that should be cursed. It was avoided. It was disapproved of. Greek was the language of the enemy. It represented everything that religious and nationalistic Jews had fought for just two centuries earlier, at the time of the Maccabean revolt. In fact, the Talmud contains other statements that illustrate how mainstream Jews had turned against the Greek language and Greek culture following the shocking events of the Maccabean revolt. For example, the Talmud in Sofarim 1, 7-8 says that the day in which the Torah was translated into Greek was as difficult for the Jewish people as the day when the golden calf was made. In other words, it was a day for national mourning and repentance. It was a disaster. Also in the Talmud, it says that on the eighth day of the Hebrew month Tebet, the law was written in Greek in the days of King Ptolemy. But it says that, as a result, and for three days darkness covered the world. That's the Gaonic additions to Megillat Ta'anit 13. These statements demonstrate just how strongly mainstream religious nationalistic Jews felt about Greek. To them, Greek was the language of the enemy the language and culture of everything that was corrupting Judaism. That is why the Book of Acts shows that there was a conflict between mainstream Jews and these Grecian Jews. Into this culture then, we find that Jews in Palestine and Israel were actually very anti-Greek. Josephus, the famous Jewish historian at the time, contains many statements that demonstrate this. See our lesson, What Does Josephus Say?, for further detail. Josephus is at pains to point out that he originally wrote in Aramaic and only later did he translate his extensive works into the Greek language. Furthermore, Josephus admits that he still could not pronounce Greek well, even after years of learning it. Even more amazingly, he says that only a few people he knew could even speak Greek and that Greek learning was actually frowned upon by the Jews. For instance, in Antiquities of the Jews, Josephus says, But because this work surrounded a great deal in process of time, as usually happens to such as undertake great things, I grew weary and went on slowly, it being a large subject and a difficult thing to translate our history into a foreign and to us unaccustomed language. 
Josephus here says that Greek was to his people, the Jews, a foreign and unaccustomed language. Translating his works from Aramaic into Greek was a great burden for him. He goes on to say, For those of my own nation freely acknowledge that I far exceed them in the learning belonging to Jews. I have also taken a great deal of pains to obtain the learning of the Greeks and understand the elements of the Greek language, although I have so long accustomed myself to speak our own tongue that I cannot pronounce Greek with sufficient exactness. Josephus here confirms that, that it took enormous difficulty for him to learn Greek, and even after doing so, he still could not pronounce it properly. But Josephus continues, For our nation does not encourage those who learn the languages of many nations. We see from these statements in Josephus, and the earlier ones from the Talmud, that amongst mainstream religious Jews, Greek was not spoken. Indeed, it was something which was to be avoided, and any attempt to do so was cursed, as we saw. Into this cultural context, therefore, let us ask the question again, did Jews speak Greek? Now, the internet is full of badly researched articles whose simplistic argument is based on the circular argument we saw earlier. In other words, that Greek was a lingua franca of the Middle East, and therefore Jesus spoke Greek, which is why the New Testament was written in Greek. As we saw earlier, there was certainly a significant minority of Jews called Grecian Jews in the New Testament and Hellenized Jews from history who had succumbed to Greek language and culture. They spoke Greek and were no doubt proud of their sophisticated wisdom and superior learning. As we saw in the Wikipedia article earlier, Alexandria in Egypt and possibly Antioch in Turkey were centres for these Grecian Jews. But first of all, Alexandria and Antioch were cities. They were not countries, let alone whole regions. Just because those cities had significant numbers of Greek-speaking Jews does not mean that all Jews everywhere else also speak Greek. After all, New York has a significant number of Hebrew-speaking Jews. But that doesn't mean that all Jews in New York speak Hebrew, or that Hebrew is the national language of the people of New York, or that all Americans speak Hebrew just because some Jews in New York do. Similarly, just because there were significant numbers of Greek-speaking Jews in Alexandria and Antioch does not mean that all Jews in Egypt and Syria spoke Greek, or that all Jews in those countries spoke Greek, or that Jews in Israel spoke Greek, or that everyone in general in the Middle East spoke Greek. In particular, as we have seen from both the historian Josephus and the Talmud, Jews in Israel, in Palestine, generally did not speak Greek. They avoided it. It was frowned upon. It was considered better to eat swine's flesh than to learn Greek. It was a thing to be cursed. They openly despised Greek learning and culture. Jews in Israel didn't need Greek to converse with the ruling Romans because the Romans spoke Latin. Jews in Israel might occasionally have needed some Greek words for commerce, but actually learning Greek to speak it as their common language, no, that's impossible. We also have to remember the cultural context into which the New Testament was written. Jesus, of course, was a religious Jew par excellence. He was the Messiah and he came to fulfill the law. He was in the line of David and he would have been king if the Maccabean dynasty had not been ended by the Romans. As religious Jews, Jesus and the disciples of all the Jews in Israel at the time would have been the most unlikely to have spoken Greek. And if they did not speak Greek, if they would not have spoken it, and would even have avoided it, how could the Gospels and the other New Testament writings have been first written in Greek and only later translated into Aramaic, the language of their country? That would be a cultural anomaly. Does it not make more cultural sense as religious Jews in first century Palestine that the Gospels and the other New Testament writings were first written in what Josephus calls our language and the language of our country and then later translated into Greek for a wider audience just as the Hebrew Old Testament was later translated into Greek for a wider audience? In summary, we need to understand the culture and context of the New Testament. Just because the Greek New Testament has become entrenched in the West today, and just because there were pockets of Greek-speaking Jews in major cities 
such as Alexandria and possibly Antioch, we should not make the false leap of logic to assume that everyone across the Middle East, religious Jews included, spoke Greek as their common language. That was just not the case. Jews in Palestine in the first century AD spoke Aramaic as their normal everyday language. And therefore, as the Messiah, as a religious Jew and not a Grecian Jew in Palestine in the first century AD, Jesus spoke Aramaic. As Josephus says, it was the language of his country. But Greek? No. As Josephus says, that was a foreign language and Jews were not encouraged to learn the languages of the surrounding nations. It was better to eat swine's flesh than to learn Greek.